And I want to talk a little bit today about how I think that you can make a bigger impact with uh, people skills rather than simply with code. And when we think about people skills, we think about you know, soft, softly influencing people, showing empathy for our users, uh, having a, a self-awareness, um, knowing good problem-solving techniques, uh, things like that. And you know, being a good communicator, for example, very important. But I want to get to some of the other areas here as well. Uh, so I think what's really important is we need to be thinking for users, uh, with users, not for them. Uh, we want to be able to just do the discovery and learn what we want to do. But at the same time, uh, we need to be able to see the problem for ourselves because too often we end up not really paying attention to what the actual problem is. It's really important to be able to communicate without using jargon. Uh, at the beginning of this talk, I was asked by the, by the, the translators to see my slides. I said, I promise you, there's no jargon in this whole talk. Um, it's it's that, uh, pretty simple, because I want to be able to communicate to everyone. I also think that your interactions with others end up mattering a lot more than the code that you write. When I'm looking at a new system for the first time, I normally don't care as much how good the system is. I'm also trying to understand how good the team is behind it. Uh, and we do this in WordPress as well. Um, in WordPress, when we're considering which external libraries to add, anyone get the joke? No? A little bit? Um, when we're considering what, WordPress, what, what libraries to add to WordPress, we end up considering not the technology, but also all of the other pieces. How well does that team communicate with us? Uh, about five years ago, uh, a few of us met with the creator of Backbone.js uh, specifically to talk about, we want to build a new media library, the media library that's been in WordPress for about five years now, and we want to pick what at the time was the Ascendant JavaScript framework for about a week, I guess. And we were trying to figure out, like, should we go with this? And so we sat down with him and specifically talked out our concerns and uh, your philosophies and what, how does all of that make sense? And can we, uh, does this make sense to adopt? Uh, we have very good relationships with uh, the jQuery team. jQuery is, um, now uh, more than half as old as JavaScript. It goes back a number of years. Um, and it's not the sexiest or best piece of software out there, but it is something that ends up being uh, uh, really great for uh, just like doing things on the internet. And so it's really important that our philosophies lined up with that project. Uh, current conversations right now about uh, using React or using Vue.js. And a lot of that isn't just which one is better software, but also how many people maintain it. Can, do we have conversations with them? How are our interactions with those teams? It matters a lot more than really anything else. Uh, what I would also argue is that um, not only do your interactions with others matter more than the code you write, but also the code you write can improve your interactions with others. And so let me give you an example. Uh, you are doing code review, and you are constantly commenting about coding style. Uh, you need an extra space here. This should really be broken up into two lines. I'm not entirely sure why you didn't put this if statement here instead. Think little things like that. And over time, you are expending social capital and potentially creating negative interactions with someone when you don't necessarily need to. Uh, in Go, in the language Go, I have an entire specific defined, this is how Go is formatted. They have eliminated all arguments about formatting Go. Probably not true. There's some mailing list somewhere. But they've just papered over all of that. So if you can imagine in your continuous integration, you're running your unit tests, or you, uh, you are making sure that it is styled correctly, you can now let a computer handle those interactions rather than you. Uh, uh, an example that I had in government is that I was 
back to the floppy disk story a bit, I was trying to make sure that all of these agencies were basically doing their homework. And I was the big, bad, mean person who would send them emails each day, letting them know how far along they were and the things that we needed them to do. But at the same time, I was also offering to help, and in some cases, sitting down with their engineers or talking about their problems. And I realized they didn't like me all that much, because I would also be the person that would hold them accountable by sending them emails and saying, hi, um, you didn't do all the things that we needed you to do. And so I sat down with them, and I said, OK, let's make a deal. I will stop bothering you if you can agree on what metrics we need to track. And we'll take those metrics, we'll put them in a dashboard, and then you can be mad at the dashboard and not at me. This ended up working out really well. They stopped being mad at me. They started responding to me nicely now, instead of me being the big, evil, mean person. Uh, and then they had a single source of truth for them to work off of. This ends up being really helpful. Rather than arguing about, like, well, what is causing the problem? Well, now we have a non-human telling us specifically what those problems are. And I guess I'll end with uh, this idea of, as many times as possible, asking more questions. Uh, I was dealing with an authentication system uh, at a specific agency. And an engineer said, well, we really want to have system A and system B talk to each other securely. Nason, how should we do that? And I said, oh, well, just, I don't know, like 2A TLS or something else like that. Just have them talk. And they're like, oh, OK. That works. And I was like, wait, it's not that easy. What else are you trying to do? I said, oh, well, a user logs in here, and then they, the data gets stored over here. And so we're just going to like share a secret key back and forth. I said, oh, you're describing, depending on the specifics, like OAuth or, or SAML. I was like, you should use one of those. And like. Yeah, maybe. We might not. And I was like, wait, you're inventing your own authentication system. This is not a good idea. What are you actually trying to do? And after asking enough questions, I realized that what they were trying to do is uh, they didn't trust the developers on the team to actually write something to OAuth or SAML spec. Which point my question was, what makes you think they're going to write anything else that's secure either? Uh, in, the, in the end, a lot of times this comes down to how, uh, what kind of people skills can we really deploy. Uh, we have this hanging up at our office, um, asking more questions. It's actually a post-it note at the end with a question mark at the end of it. Uh, we find that it ends up being really important to ask why, to listen, and to be able to respond very deliberately. Uh, and I'll close with uh, one final story. Floppy disks, fax machines, some kind of pattern here about old legacy government technology. Uh, in this particular case, um, I, we, we were asked uh, that well, every day someone faxed uh, a ton of uh, a spreadsheet to about 40 people. And then those people would all retype all of the information. This is not very good. And we said, well, you could email it. And they said, well, it's protected information, and we can't email it unencrypted. I said, oh, well, you could do what every other government agency does, which is encrypt the email and send it, and then send a follow-up email with the password. <laughs> and they said, no, our information security people are actually pretty smart they require us to use a fax machine because it's secure. <laughs> Not going to touch that one. Uh, and so at that point, we're like, OK, that's, that's fine. What are you actually trying to do? And they said, well, we're trying to eliminate the fax machine. I'm like, are you? You're trying to eliminate the idea of typing up all the information again, right? You're not trying to eliminate the fax. They're like, well, are you recommending that we do like optical character recognition? I said, no. Your purpose isn't to stop faxing. Your purpose is to stop typing. What if you send the encrypted email and then fax them the password? So this is exactly how this system still works two years later. Thank you very much.